Well, hey there, Papper people. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a really good channel. I didn't really have anything to say when I said that, so that's what came out. Welcome to the channel. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist. Today, I want to talk to you about sleep testing, all forms of sleep testing. You know, guys, some of you think that my passion is CPAP and CPAP machines and CPAP mass. That's kind of like a byproduct of my actual passion, which is sleep diagnostics. I love me some sleep diagnostics. So sleep studies, love doing them, love performing them. I love looking at all the data. I just love it. I don't know why. To me, looking at your data in Oscar or Sleep HQ is kind of like sleep diagnostics. I love it. It's like a puzzle. I'm like a Jack Russell Terrier with a sock. But let's talk about the heart of this, and that is sleep tests. Now, let's start with the most rudimentary one, talk about some pros and cons, then we'll move on to the next. But first, I'm gonna kick this off to my sponsor. Here we have a very sad and lanky, unable to afford simple gardening service, like his neighbors, who have discovered CPAPsupplies.com. So now Lanky is stuck in an endless cycle of mowing and sucking and more sucking and whacking. He should have gone to CPAPsupplies.com. But one day Lanky does discover CPAPsupplies.com. And when he discovers discount code SCADYLANKY25, his whole world changes. How much money will you save at CPAPsupplies.com? All right, first up is the type three. This is anyone who says like a, a home sleep study, this is what they're talking about. And what's funny is it's not a home sleep study, it's actually a home breathing study because you don't know if you're asleep. Now, typically what you're gonna have is a unit that sits on your chest. You're gonna have a belt that comes over here. That's your thoracic belt. So we can tell if you're breathing or not. You're gonna have maybe another one going down to your abdomen and getting your, your stomach in and out if you're trying to breathe. You have a nasal cannula coming off of this that picks up the pressure of you breathing. And then you have a finger probe, an oximeter. That is gonna be your type three test. You get breathing, you get blood oxygen levels, and you get effort, which is your chest and abdominal belts. Now, who is that test good for? I mean, no one really. It's cheap. So some of the pros of it is it's cheap, it's extremely easy to administer. If you're looking for a reimbursement cost, Medicare reimburses about $125 for it, roughly. So it's, it's purely for volume. Get people tested as quick as possible. And the funny thing is, well, not really funny, the scammy thing is, a lot of those people come back as, eh, we don't know. Come in for a sleep study, an actual one in a lab, and then we'll tell you what to do. So it's more of a screener. It's kind of crap. So people that it is good for, if you have people that are like, dude, you snore and stop breathing constantly. I hear you <laughs> doing that all night. Just get a type three. It's gonna, the AHI is gonna be god awful. It's, it's not gonna be accurate. But at that point, who cares? At that point, it's more of a formality. You just wanna get CPAP equipment or do something to, to progress and get treatment for it. You're not looking for accuracy. You know you got it. Now, next is a type two home sleep study. This is my bread and butter. I actually have a business based off of type two home sleep studies. So back in the day, this is what I used. Now, this big device would sit on your chest. It's like a Kleenex box. And off of this, you would have belt here, belt down here. Then you'd have a nasal cannula coming up. You would have other leads. So basically we had the exact same thing as the type three, nasal cannula, chest and abdominal belt, finger probe for blood oximetry. In addition to that, we have EKG leads for our heart. We have chin EMG to see if our chin muscles are moving. It's part of sleep staging. We have eyes. So we can see if you're looking, also used for sleep staging. And then we have brain activity. That is for accurate sleep time. That is very important. That is what differentiates it from a type three study. Type three study is a home breathing test. Type two study is an actual home sleep test or a home sleep study. So again, the things that make a type two different than a type three are EEG, so we can see your brain activity, get accurate sleep and wake time, and we have heart. We're looking at your heart beat, your heart rate, your heart rhythm. Now legs for a type two are optional. I have a business, I happen to do legs. I record legs all the time. Legs are really unimportant to be quite honest with you, but I like to add them in there because 
it's easy and it's another parameter we can look at, so why not? Medicare reimburses this at about $75 more than a type three study. So when you're asking, how come no one does a type two? I don't get it. Why would no one do that? The logistics of it are so difficult that it makes that extra 75 bucks they throw at you not even worth it. So Jason, why do you do them? Uh, the reason is because I accept cash. I bypass insurance entirely. They can suck it. Okay, now this is the old stuff. Let me show you my new equipment. This is why I haven't been putting out a lot of videos lately. I've been trying to retool my entire business based on getting rid of this. By the way, I didn't mention, these things are coming off the side. So you have all kinds of crap. This is my new one. So I have this and I have a bunch of leads coming out of here straight to you. It's phenomenal. Okay, so why would anyone want a type two study? Well, here's the thing. With a type three study going back, a lot of those have a low AHI. Unfortunately, people will often have a very low AHI, but a very high respiratory disturbance index because there's very subtle things in there called RIRAs, respiratory effort related arousals, which gives you a diagnosis of upper airway resistance syndrome. Most sleep centers, including the big name ones, don't even look at RIRAs. They don't even score them. So for someone who has a difficult time sleeping and they know their sleep, there's something wrong with their sleep and they have a sleep study and it shows nothing, that's really frustrating. So you wanna have, you really wanna have a study that's much more comprehensive, like my home sleep study, my type two study, or an in-lab study, and you wanna find out if they actually score RERAs and have the diagnosis of upper airway resistance syndrome. You can just ask them, how many people have you diagnosed with upper airway resistance syndrome in the last year? If they give you a number, you know they probably score RERAs. Okay, but let's get back to the type two. Who wants a type two? Someone who wants an accurate, apnea hypopnea index, because you're going to have accurate sleep wake time. Pilots, if you're, if you're working with the FAA, they require either a type two or a type one, which we'll get to here in a second. And again, people that just wanna be tested at home because you don't wanna go into a lab. That brings us into a type one sleep study. Type one sleep study is an in-lab study. So if you were to compare it to my home sleep study, I have EEG, in an in-lab study, you're gonna have a full EEG. So I just use the frontals. In an in-lab study, you're gonna use frontal, central, occipital. You have a lot more brain activity. Is it really needed? Eh, not really, but uh, it makes it nice if someone has a seizure disorder to see all that. And that's really the only difference between my sleep study and an in-lab study. You're gonna have full EEG and you're gonna have a creepy dude or, or lady watching you while you sleep. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna actually give you a visual of what all of these look like. And you can see how they kind of expand and explode. This is a type three home sleep study. These are all the parameters that someone like myself would be looking at. And keep in mind, these are auto scored typically. Usually they're, they're not manually scored by a registered polysomnographic technologist. All right, now let's go ahead and add a type two. Now this is a typical type two home sleep study all the parameters that you would normally see. And then now here is gonna be my home sleep study. This is what I'm seeing when I'm looking at a home sleep study that I actually send out to people. And lastly, let's go ahead and look at a, an in-lab study. Ah, it looks the exact same, right? Except we're gonna have more channels. You're also gonna have video, you're gonna have audio you're gonna be able to listen to. And like I said, you're gonna have a sleep tech there. Now here's the other benefit of an in-lab study that I didn't mention. Yeah, you have to sleep in a crummy bed that you're not used to. Yeah, it's creepy. You're probably in a CD part of town. <laughs> but here's the other thing that's actually a really big benefit is you go in lab, if you have a split night study, they, they get you a diagnosis really quick within like three to four hours, which could be a plus, could be a negative. It really depends. But if you do need treatment, you can have this sleep study and they can put CPAP on you that night and get you titrated to the proper pressure that you're gonna need for long-term success at home. Is that realistic? I have a million videos saying probably not, but that is the added benefit is you can actually have CPAP sampled and know, oh wait, CPAP doesn't work. I actually need bi-level or wait, bi-level actually doesn't work. I actually need ASV. You can kind of go through all of those steps on one night. So an in-lab study, though it's much, much more expensive, Sometimes it's the better option. However, realistically, and this is why, like you can say I'm biased towards a type two home sleep study because that's what you do, Jason, you're biased. Oh, you're just trying to push them. I've kind of gone that direction because that's where I think it makes the most sense. You can sleep at home, you can get a quality sleep study and the titration in an in-lab study is gonna suck anyway. So we might as well just 
give you a crappy APAP anyway, they're gonna do it anyway, and then fix your sleep at that point once you've been on it, which is why I have those consultation services. See, you know what? The system has pushed me to do this. I fill in the gaps of where they suck. I know I threw a lot at you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. I love answering that stuff. I wanna thank one more time the sponsor of this channel, CPAPsupplies.com. Yeah, they sell CPAP supplies, but does that mean that I'm 100% biased on that stuff? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. It's a good company though. If you need to buy CPAP equipment, I would definitely buy it from them. And last thing, if you need this home sleep study, check out AXGSleepDiagnostics.com. We also have consultation services. So if you feel like your sleep with CPAP sucks, you want an Oscar Pap analysis, I do those, I enjoy those, I go through with you. A lot of people that have had them love them. If you've had one, let, let people know about it in the comment section. Maybe, maybe you hated it. I think we were stuck at four people that hate my guts. Everyone else seems to like me, so that's cool. I wanna give a, a couple shout outs. Check out Sleep Apnea Stories. That is a podcast done by Emma Cooksey. She had a guy on there, a pro baseball player by the name of Bob File. Bob File and Emma, uh, they talked me up pretty good. I, I gotta say, it made me blush. Got my ego going, my, it got my ego going quite a bit. My wife put me back in my place, so we're, we're cool there. But she has a great podcast. She talks to a lot of really interesting people and uh, it's definitely worth, worth a, a listen. With that, if you like this kind of content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I really thank you for spending your time here with me. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some mask bright available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espolong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swearingen, Chung Tu Chen, Edward Steiner, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks buddy to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters,